comp and payments. How do we decide how much to pay these people? Uh, our lovely creator partners. How do you decide? You reach out to a creator. You think they're they're a unicorn, a diamond in the rough, a needle in a haystack. How do you know once you get those metrics back and the, maybe the media kit, how much this creator expects to be paid, whether or not it's worth it? How do you make that determination? Ideally, there would be like an industry standard in terms of like that influencer can charge that much money because of X, Y, and Z metrics. But unfortunately, um, even though influencer marketing has come a long way, I think that's probably one area which is still, there's no transparency. So I guess that's also like one of the big elephant in the rooms, which is always a big discussion point. Um, so I think from my experience, in my opinion, the best way is to always ask the agent and the influencer first what they actually want. I think you're always in a bit of a tricky position if you're actually, you're the one that, um, that brings the offer to the table. Again, sometimes it's because it's way too low or sometimes it's because you're actually overpaying. And it's always a, like a little bit of a, I guess when the influencer says, yes, great, let's do it. Then you're usually like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm overpaying now or if this is like the right value for like my product and uh, the brand. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a tricky one. So I guess maybe as a company, you could kind of come up with a bit of a formula or like a quick calculation that involves a couple of other metrics which are really like private and internal to and really individual to the company to come up with a rough estimation what would work for you um but yeah i think that number one um i guess you you use a little bit of your common sense i guess uh, if uh, a content creator with ten thousand followers ask for three thousand pounds i guess that's probably a little bit too much um, just because again, use your experience, like use, use a bit of a benchmark of what other content creators in the past, um, have asked for. And then maybe like one tip is as well is once you have received, uh, an influencer fee from the agent or from the influencer itself, I think be prepared to negotiate. I think influencers, they do ask for a little bit more. I guess they do know these days that brands and agencies or like whoever is like wants to work with you. They will negotiate with you. So I guess uh, be prepared for it. Don't feel afraid of it. I guess negotiation is a little bit of a dooming um, topic and if, especially if you've never done it. Um, but at the same time as well, if it doesn't, if you don't come to a middle ground, don't be afraid to walk away. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And uh, I think you can say to the agent or the influencer as well that, you know what, actually, with this budget in mind, it just doesn't work for us at the moment. Um, let's revisit in a couple of months. And then usually maybe sometimes they come back to you and say, actually, let's see if we can make it work. And if, if not, then just revisit in a couple of months. I totally agree. I think first point that you made, like get them to say their price first. I know all influencers, all creators and agents will have media kits. So that's part of their kind of service to be able to tell you that and then yeah leverage leverage your brand like leverage what the vision is so make it clear that it might not be a one one off for example that there's the opportunity to collaborate you know monthly like there's long-term kind of benefits to agreeing to a reduced rate and we can look to you know increase them um over time that kind of thing so i think it always makes sense to try and sell a bit of a vision as well outside of just being like I'll, I'll do half your asking price. Um, if you're going to go with half the asking price, say kind of why, um, and what other benefits there are to working with your brand. Um, and then I guess the only other thing to, to touch on is like making sure that you're paying and negotiating for what you actually want to use. So if you want usage rights to use on your paid media or your any sponsored ads or even your organic website or social channels, then ensure that you're paying for that because it can come back to bite you um if you haven't negotiated that and you then just go ahead and use the content anyway so make sure that those are negotiated into the fee as well if that's what the plan is to do with the content yeah and then at the same time though if an influencer is asking for a little bit of more money but you really want to work with that person and um, just maybe say okay we're happy to go ahead with that higher fee but can we ask for more like, can we get user trial in included? Can we get more content? I think you just really 
you need to negotiate hard to make it work for you. But yeah, that's my tips to make it work. Totally. Yeah. I think uh, from what I've seen, there's so much creativity that can be built into these agreements that sometimes what we hear is, hey, we reached out to a bunch of creators. They sent us offers we disagreed with. Influencer marketing doesn't work for us. And I think those people are generally um, not really getting creative about even understanding what exactly it is that they expect. Um, what, what did you, what is the budget that you start with is an important question. What are you actually willing to spend in the, your partnerships function in general um, is an important one. Why did the creator say no? Is it because you only offered affiliate and they don't know who you are or trust you to pay them? Is it because uh, the price was too low or they have better offers or you asked for too much? Um, once you understand those things, you can really start to uh, to do more and more and, and, and um, uh, apply some, some, hum some of that human leverage that we talked about too. I mean, if a creator doesn't want to work with you today and you have that two months, let's revisit in two months, you've got two months to make them love you. Because if you show up in two months and you sent their kids coloring books and you sent them spa tickets or like a free product and you like there's a universe where you went to their house and cleaned their frickin windows or something like uh, there's something. Uh, so somewhere between what's unreasonable and nothing uh, is the sweet spot of how you can invest in these people to actually get them interested and overcome those specific whys of um, they don't trust you. They don't know you. They don't know if their audience will care about this product. Uh, you haven't even gotten past the agent. Maybe it's them you really need to be selling to. Uh, so I think it like, I don't know. I'd like to see people getting a little crazier with these negotiations. You know, we yeah. get salespeople on golf courses all over the world, but not a lot of influencer marketing managers. Maybe let's end on pure operations uh, on, and payments. A question we often get is how, how to, how to technically pay these people at scale. Uh, and I'll try not to plug too much, but I'd be curious if you have any pro tips and tricks for, uh, paying creators at scale, especially when you have geographical kind of everywhere status, you have to pay people out in, in dozens or hundreds of countries, uh, any challenges, anything to keep in mind, how would you structure this if you're starting out and scaling up? Processes have always been in place everywhere that I've, I've worked. I guess like my first thing would be <laughs> if it had to be manual and you had to use your internal systems, it would be a nightmare, like nothing shy of that. And when you're looking at doing anything at scale, I think the main thing is like once you've done a campaign and you've got the content and everything's like ready to go and kind of signed, sealed, delivered, to then be faffing over payments at the end is just the most painful thing and something that I've had experience with doing in the past. And I guess any way that you can make that as easy as possible, like I'm not going to plug, but I've, we've always used the tool and it does make it a lot easier than having to go through your internal like systems to get it all approved and onboarding people as suppliers, as partners, getting the contracts in the right place to enable that is very t tiring and, and boring. So using a tool that can enable that efficiency would be great. On the affiliate side of it, if you can get people on your network, it'd be AWIN, Partnerize, CJ, all of those guys, their payments are very automated and it's quite easy to do it in, in that regard. And then if you're using, you know, your publishers, uh, the likes of reward style, et cetera, they handle all the payments. So there's a lot of benefits, I guess, to working with um, those kind of publishers, even though they take, you know, quite a hefty cut of the commission that you could be paying out if you're going to do it like yeah at scale use the tool because it will make life a lot easier i guess uh, it all depends like how big your accountants or finance team is if they are happy to process hundreds of invoices depending on like how big your scale is if they're up for that then be really thankful um that they that they support you in there but if not i guess there are tools in place and um, that will support you in getting all these transactions done but i guess just really make sure that the process is clear and not lengthy because, and that you really make sure that the tool or like the partner that you're working with, uh, pays the invoices on time. Cause I think that's like a huge trust part. Like you just got to pay the invoices on time because they're, they're relying on, on their money, on their income. And I guess like, if you really like, it's, I think it's a big part that has like a big impact on a relationship. If it's paid on time, right. Um, if it's paid delayed, if the pay is delayed, then I think it could potentially make or break uh, a second campaign or a third campaign.
Absolutely, and totally drive up the risk of somebody going on the internet who you wanted to exactly. be on your team and saying, oh, by the way, these guys don't pay their bills, so remember what I said about their sneakers last week? Yeah, I yeah. take it back. Um, Fiona, Ben, it has been a great pleasure, an honor and a pri privilege to speak with you. Uh, I learned some things today. I really appreciate that, and I think lots of other folks do too. Anything else you'd like to say on the topic of creator partnerships starting out, kicking off, or if you just want to plug Wild and Smash, then I'm also excited to hear about it. No, nothing. Thank you for uh, <laughs> having us. Thanks for having me and us. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thank you so much. Really, I appreciate it. Here, I'm going to click that stop button now. <laughs>